Today's Macintosh shenanigans are brought to you by Squarespace. But more on that in a bit. Look, I finally found the most powerful PowerPC Mac that Apple ever released. Wait, no, it's not this one. It's this one. This nearly identical looking one is the new one. This is the old one. Right, you can tell them apart by the horrible dent that this one has in the corner. Well, just like my teachers told me when I was a kid, it's what's on the inside that counts. Well, I'm pretty sure they were just saying that. Anyway, this is the infamous quad-core G5, the very last Power Mac that Apple ever released, which is getting very hard to find, especially as their factory liquid cooling systems tend to blow themselves up. So today, let's crack into this thing, make sure it's not a ticking time bomb, and then we'll see what all this G5 fuss was all about. So stay tuned. And if you think that placing a leaky liquid cooler over a power supply is grade A Cupertino engineering, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. If this thing works, I have some really wacky plans for it, so it's definitely worth sticking around. On June 6, 2005, Steve Jobs got on stage at WWDC and shocked the Macintosh world by confirming a pretty radical rumor. After a decade of touting the PowerPC architecture as vastly superior to the sluggish and bloated x86, Apple was ditching PowerPC for Intel. And Steve didn't pull any punches during the announcement either. He basically said that PowerPC was a dying platform with no future, and that's why there hasn't been a three gigahertz G5 or a G5 PowerBook. Now, I stood up here two years ago in front of you, and I promised you this. And we haven't been able to deliver that to you yet. I think a lot of you would like a G5 in your PowerBook, and we haven't been able to deliver that to you yet. So it's pretty funny that right after WWDC in October 2005, Apple released a brand new, super expensive quad-core G5, their fastest machine ever. And it's no surprise that the masses weren't beating down the door to spend the equivalent of $5,000 in today's money on a dead-end platform. Now, plenty of people did buy this Mac. In fact, it made a lot of sense for specialized uses like recording studios who would aim to get many years out of their existing specialized PowerPC software. And in fact, that's exactly where this one came from. A recording studio that pretty much just retired this machine in the last year or so. But high price and the Intel transition aren't the only reasons that this aluminum monster is so hard to come by these days. There's a much more shocking reason. Whoa. Whoa! You see, the G5 processor runs so hot, especially when they're dual core and there's two of them shoved into a metal case, that Apple shipped these things with liquid cooling from the factory. The only problem is, a lot of these liquid coolers were quite prone to leaking. And given that the liquid cooler is right above the power supply in the case, immediate and catastrophic failure is not uncommon. But even with all of that, finding a good working quad G5 is well worth the trouble. It's the absolute apex of the PowerPC Mac world. With dual, dual core processors, you get four G5s running at 2.5 gigahertz. The DDR2 RAM is expandable to 16 gigabytes, and I've even seen pictures of 32 gigs installed and recognized, although it's not clear if the system can actually use that much memory. It also uses PCI Express with two four lane slots, one eight lane slot, and a 16 lane slot for the GPU. I mean, with those specs, it's almost a modern computer. Well, an incredibly inefficient low end modern machine, but still, I'm really excited for this thing. If it works, and we're definitely gonna have to open it up and give its guts a close inspection, it will be the best possible PowerPC Mac Linux machine. I mean, I bet we can do something crazy like stream to Twitch from this thing under its own power. You know what else I'm really excited about? The sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. 
easily create and manage your web presence with a highly integrated suite of professional tools, even with no experience using Squarespace's all-in-one platform. It's really easy to get started. Like, say I wanted to build a website all about this big, goofy quad G5. Squarespace has a ton of beautiful templates that I could choose to start from. And from there, it's simple to build a great looking site that's also fast, responsive, and mobile friendly. And with Squarespace's extensive built-in tool set, I can also do things like optimize for SEO, manage a mailing list, check my analytics, and much more, all geared towards managing your entire web presence. So do the channel a big favor and check out squarespace.com slash action retro today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code action retro to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, so let's open up this machine and carefully inspect the liquid cooling and the area around the power supply for any sign of leakage. The guy I bought it from said he booted it up just before he listed it and it worked fine. And when he asked me if I wanted to boot it up before I bought it, I was like, no, 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 no. Because if there's any leak, any boot could be its last boot. I mean, I really hope it's in good shape. It's the early units with a single pump that are the most prone to fail and later units are actually known to be much more reliable. So hopefully that's what we're dealing with here. And if it is in good shape, well, then we can try to boot our Debian 11 SSD from our other G5 that worked incredibly well on there. And I bet it will fly on this thing. Okay, so the only flash that I could find is this super heavy duty one, which is uh, about as bright as the sun but this should be good to really get in there and check for any leaks. Take the fan out. Fan looks good. And then this just like slides, I think. There we go. Come on. Yep. Okay, and now we can see the water cooling system. And, uh, you know, I don't really know what I'm looking at as far as what the components are. I think there's only one pump in there, but I don't see anything underneath it. I don't see any drip, any mark. Nothing on these pipes. The tubes look all, all together, no cracking. I mean, at some point we'll probably wanna take this out and redo it. And uh, I do wonder if we can put some sort of modern solution in here, like a modern all-in-one cooling kit. Yeah, and I love this dire warning right here. If you see liquid, unplug computer and consult manual. Yeah, because the computer is about to explode. Okay, now let's see what kind of video card we're working with in here. Looks like the uh, standard 6600 NVIDIA. Oh my God. What in the world? What is going on here? Look at that. That's this capacitor here, which is loose. The, the solder is all sorts of messed up on it. Did it come from the factory like that? Or maybe it shorted out on the case somehow? I mean, I don't see like any burning, but look at that. It's like all mushroomed out. Well, I, uh, I think we're gonna have to fix that before we go any further. Yeah, look at that. That is like a loose tooth. I can't imagine that this card was working unless it's just so messed up in there that it's still making some sort of a contact. But <laughs> let's clean it up. And of course, I'm not particularly good at soldering, so uh, don't give me a hard time. I'm just gonna put some flux on it. And then we'll just solder wick it right off. Let's 
So weird. I think that somebody replaced this cap themselves before because I can see the pin is like bent out. So I think this is just a haphazard soldering job from someone who didn't have a soldering iron, perhaps. Still very strange. Okay, I am fairly confident in turning this thing on, but we'll keep a close eye on it. So hopefully we don't have any computer clan-esque surprises. Here we go. That oh, would help if I plug this in. All right, here we go. Didn't chime, but the hard drive's going. Chimed! Okay, so far so good. Anything on the screen with that horrible graphics card? Light came, yes, it's alive. <laughs> All right. Okay, we booted into a hard drive with uh, what looks to be still personal files on it. So we won't go too in depth here, but yeah, a lot of uh, recording studio stuff, Logic Pro, Motu audio setup. But about this Mac, yeah, we're running 10.58 with our four 2.5 gigahertz PowerPC G5s and six gigs of memory, which we'll definitely be upgrading very soon. Okay, well, I think you know what time it is. So this is the hard drive from the other G5, the dual two gigahertz, that we installed the latest version of Debian on, which actually runs great on that machine. So I'm gonna swap this drive into this machine, see just how much better it runs, and well, I'm sure it's gonna boot, it's not even a question, but we're gonna have to do a little bit of trickery with the boot CD to get open firmware to recognize the new drive and boot from it correctly. So let's swap this drive in and then boot this thing up. And we don't even have to take the spinning disk hard drive out of here. We'll just unplug it and then leave this dangling in the case as is tradition. Okay, so the boot menu does not see the SSD, which actually I pretty much expected because that SSD is using Grub and I don't think it has Yaboot on there at all. So that's fine. This however is the boot CD, this new GNU, it's not a yak. Everybody yelled at me for calling it a yak, although it looks like a yak. But that will boot us into a live environment that we can use to run a script. So I'm gonna start this in rescue mode. Okay, so we're just going to go through these menus until we get to the live environment. Okay, so now I'm gonna start a live environment using dev sda3 as the root file system, which is our Linux root file system. Execute a shell. Now, what I'm gonna do is download that power progress script that we used in the last G5 video when we first installed Debian 11 onto a G5, but I'm gonna modify it just a bit. So, we have wget, right? Yep, okay. So wget https repo.powerprogress.org slash debian slash install slash grubfix.sh. And now I'm going to edit that in nano because we don't need it to actually install grub and do all that other stuff. Grub is already installed. We just need to tell open firmware where grub is. So I'm going to comment out literally everything except for the code that tells open firmware what to boot from, which is right here where it does uh, setting open firmware env parameter and there's nv set env boot device and then the partition that we tell it so of path gets the open firmware path 
of a mounted partition. So in this case, dev SDA2. And actually, let me show you that because that's pretty interesting. So I'll save this. If I do OF path de dev SDA2, which should be our boot partition with grub. Yeah, that gives us the full path in open firmware to that partition. So if I finish editing this script, and actually I could just, you know, run this copy paste command and do it too, but uh, I'm lazy. So I'm just going to comment out this whole script and then run it with just that one thing. Okay, so now chmod u plus x grubfix.sh. Now I can do grubfix.sh dev sda2. Okay, set the open firmware parameter for the environment. I think we're good. And then we'll reboot the system and see what we boot from. All right, that's welcome to Grub, but I don't know if it's, nope, that's, that's it, we did it. That's Grub on the SSD, so let's boot. Wow, that booted fast. Now we have the choice of Mate or Gnome. I'm gonna leave it on Mate because I know that works on the other G5 just fine. And Gnome has some issues. All right, it's mad about something with the monitor, but it seems fine. Yeah, look at this. Here we are in Debian 11 with our four 2.5 gigahertz PowerPC G5s. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Four threads. I mean, we're using two entire processors to do four threads, but look at it. Four threads, and we're using 1.3% of one of them. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. So I'm really curious, does OBS work? I had OBS installed on the other one. It's actually, it's in the repo. If we do apt search OBS studio. Yeah, so it's installed. It's compiled by Debian in the unstable repo for PowerPC 64. So I don't know why it didn't work in the other Mac, but let's see. OBS. Nope. Illegal instruction. So I don't know why that's the issue. S trace OBS is something people told me to do. But yeah, I guess that gives you some more information but I'm gonna have to tinker with that some more and I have the source code on here that we can build, but I don't think we should use OBS if we try to stream this thing to Twitch because that's a lot of overhead. Instead, FFmpeg is already installed and you can set up FFmpeg to stream to Twitch or even YouTube. It's awesome. You can just do it from the command line with just as little overhead as possible. And I've watched some videos and read some stuff on it. So I think we're gonna try that, not in this video, in an upcoming video, but how cool would that be to stream to Twitch from a 20 year old PowerPC G5. Okay, so I am so excited to have this PowerPC behemoth at my disposal and seemingly fully working after those, well, that one quick fix on the goofy video card soldering thing. But other than that, this thing is perfect. And it's booted off of the Debian SSD, which is running great. And yeah, I want to try to stream this thing to Twitch. I want to see what kinds of upgrades we can put in there. I have more RAM on the way for this to max it out at 16 gigs. And I'm interested what other kinds of PCIe shenanigans we can pull on this thing with some interesting upgrade cards. But I'll link my Twitch account below. I've never really used it that much, but by the time you see this video, I'll probably have already tested trying to stream this to Twitch with FFmpeg. So 
you might see some stuff already up there, which could be some spoilers, but yeah, <sighs> this thing is awesome. But anyway, that'll do it for today's video. If you liked it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more G5 shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Camilla Noceda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, still a lot of Chris's, David Teglevix, Greg from Hrut K Mods, John Malman, Nick Hamsey, and Scott Thompson, who are my highest tiered patrons, and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these shenanigans possible.